right, good afternoon. Welcome to Marine One, also known Atlantic Six, is our fireboat down here for the city of Wilmington, which is a 50-foot firefighting vessel lo located along the Cape Fear River. Of course, you can look around here. We've got some hotels and that kind of thing. But y'all are gonna hang out with me for a few minutes and I'll show you a little bit about what it's like to be assigned uh, to Marine One. So I am the captain on this vessel and with me, I've got a, a crew. We have a total crew of four people. And so we've got folks with different jobs. So everyone's doing a little something right now because we just showed up here to the boat. John over there is going through some pre-checks, checking the steering, checking the electronics and that sort of thing. He was checking the engines a minute ago. And Kyra's going through, looking at the firefighting equipment that we have down in the cabin. But we'll walk around the boat and show you a little bit about kind of what makes it work. So of course on the back, you can see two real big nozzles that we have on the back fighting fire and those are those are really good power in those are two big fire pumps that are powered by these big diesel engines down here so then we'll walk around to the front and then you'll notice we have a nozzle up here that's remote control operated and so that sprays out water uh, out in front of us or behind us or anywhere we want to turn that and that's really cool Then we have another one here, which is our bow mounted nozzle. When we get up close somewhere, we use it. It's a little lower, uh, but it puts out the same amount of water as both of these. This boat can put out up to 7,000 gallons a minute, which is very impressive. How does that compare to a, a fire truck or a fire engine? Well, most of our fire trucks are putting out 1,500 gallons a minute, whereas we can put out 7,000. So that's a, that's a pretty good difference in water. But fires generally on on the water are uh, a lot of fuel involved and stuff like that. Boats generally have giant fuel tanks underneath the deck. Then we have all the ships and other uh, stuff along the river. As far as hotels, we can supply water to the fire engines if we need to, or we can try to combat a ship fire, anything of that nature. So it's, uh, it's really advantageous for us to have that amount of uh, pumping capability. One drawback to this boat is it burns a lot of fuel. So we burn upwards of 90 gallons an hour when we're running hard. So that's, uh, that's quite a bit of fuel. So we do burn through quite a bit of fuel. We have close to 2000 horsepower and we run close to 50 mile an hour. So we can get to a scene pretty quick. We also have full medical capability on board here. Uh, everyone's an EMT and we have emergency medical equipment. So we handle rescues along the river, we run offshore. And this boat here has another interesting feature where it's pretty much a giant jet ski. So what it is, is our propulsion system is a jet drive system. So we can operate in extremely shallow water. So we can walk around inside and take a look at what's happening all in the cabin here. Come on in here. All right, what you see here is the helm. This is where we operate the fire boat from. Pretty much a standard helm, just which is like a steering wheel in your car, so it'll turn us left and right, which is which is pretty normal, and uh, people can understand that pretty good. But then my gear shifters here. Basically, I have six of them down there. And, and what they actually are is this is your throttle. This would be like your gas pedal. So I can go either one with either engine. The second set controls a device we call buckets. The buckets go over the jet drives and allow me to alter the thrust from uh, left, right, under the boat. So I can stop and turn, do a 360 right uh, in its own length. And this is a transmission, it's just like putting your car in gear, this puts each engine in, in gear. And that's important because the fire pumps run off the same engines as 
that our propulsion system runs off of. So if I'm having to pump a lot of uh, water, which is run on this side of the boat, it's going to affect how the other side of the boat runs. So it takes a lot of time and knowledge really to get that synchronized and a lot of training. So it generally takes someone who works out here quite a bit, a couple of years before they can handle this boat with confidence and move it in and out of uh, tight places and along the river and know the areas. So it is a really good challenge, but at the same time, it's extremely rewarding to be out here on the water and work in such a beautiful place. A lot of really neat electronics up here. We have radar, um, chart plotter, so it's our GPS and that sort of thing, and then a host of other emergency equipment that we'll use. It also has night vision and, and things of that, a lot of different lights and, and stuff like that. And that's really about it as far as the operation of the boat goes down below. We call that the survivor's compartment down there, and then we keep a lot of rescue gear. Might be able to turn some lights on in there. Or not. What's been um, the most memorable call you've been on, on Marine One? That's a good question because we've been on uh, quite a few different responses, so it all depends on whether it's, a, it's uh, working as a dive platform for uh, our dive rescue team or handling some other land-based fires or ship board fires and that sort of thing. So I don't really know what the most memorial, uh, I don't really don't know. I think some of the most challenging is when leaving the dock at 3 in the morning in heavy fog and not being able to see a thing knowing that someone out there is needing help and relying on our training and equipment to get us there safely and operate when most other uh, folks and agencies wouldn't be able to get out. So um, that that's rewarding to me knowing that we have the capability and the people trained that for any hazard that can really get out there and operate 24-7 protecting the citizens. Why is it important for Wilmington even to have a fireboat? Well, um, the riverfront is increasing as far as its development. There's more watercraft and boats than ever in the past. Also, there are shipping uh, that the city and really state and country relies on as a port for the Port of Wilmington is huge. So being able to protect that protects our economy, protects this entire area, so it, had, it has a major impact on the, everything. So we have a lot of new development, new marinas coming in, new hotels along the waterfront, real busy downtown scene, a lot of people, and it draws a lot of tourists here that might be unfamiliar with the uh, danger, especially of the Cape Fear River, which is extremely dangerous and, and a heavy current. Um, it's not a river that you can just jump in and swim. That's uh, that's really it as far as kind of what we do. Um, we got to fire this thing up right now. We've got to go fuel up because we've got an operation coming. It's a it's a pretty big operation. It's not an emergency, but we're going to be out doing some training. So we've got to get underway here shortly. Love to take you with with us, but uh, maybe next time y'all can come along and and see us in action and see what it is that we do. Love, love to have y'all come out.